The first edition of On Being a Therapist was published over 30 years ago. And during that time, there's been a, a lot of changes in the field that have been reflected in the various editions of the book. And yet several things have remained pretty much the same. Um, but in this new edition, I've added a couple of new chapters that I think um, reflect some of the contemporary trends, one of which includes clients becoming um, much more critical and knowledgeable consumers. And um, so I've added a new chapter on not only how to be a therapist, but how to be a great client, how to get the most from the experience, because one of our jobs as a therapist is teaching people how to get the most from the experience. And um, many, many clients sometimes complain that they're not getting what they, what they prefer, what they want, because they don't speak up and ask for it. The second chapter um, that's been added is a, um, a real signature uh, part of, of what I value most in, in what I do as a writer and a therapist and a, a supervisor and a teacher. And it's the power of storytelling that in, in one sense, what we do for a living is um, hold and honor the stories of other people. And secondly, offer alternative versions of their stories in ways that are um, much more self-enhancing and, and much more constructive. Um, in addition, because it's been over seven years um, since the last edition, the fourth edition, um, there have been some new conceptual frameworks. There have been a lot of new research in the field um, that in some ways has um, validated some of the earliest things that have been talked about in the book, but on the other hand, revising significantly some of our beliefs that really aren't supported by research. And um, with changes in technology, with changes in the ways that our services are being delivered, um, it's a very, very different world these days with um, mobile devices and social media and all the different ways that people access their learning and growth experiences. The changes in the edition for therapists, um, the most honest and direct way to put that would be more of the same. That is, this was a, a pretty provocative seminal book three decades ago, speaking honestly and frankly about a lot of the taboo forbidden subjects of not what it's like to do therapy, but what it's like to be a therapist, what it's like to be not only in our head, but in our hearts and in our souls. And, um, even though 30 years ago, I felt like a lone voice um, speaking about many of the issues um, that I've struggled with throughout my career um, related to not knowing enough or not being able to do enough or sometimes feeling like a fraud or holding lots of doubts and uncertainties about what I do and, and how I do it. Um, there hasn't been as much uh, as I had hoped to jump on this bandwagon to be more honest and frank about what our experiences are. So I would hope that readers would find a degree of, of validation of their own experiences, that um, the struggles that we face, um, the concerns and doubts that we have about what we're doing and how we're doing it are, are totally valid questions to be asking ourselves. And yet um, I very much hope um, that my intention follows through with the way readers experience, um, uh, not so much reading the book as experiencing the book, that is the incredible joys and satisfactions and privileges that we have of being members of what I have always considered to be the luckiest job in the world. I mean, it's just like amazing that we get paid to do the incredible things that we get to do. As, as hard work as it is, is how much we're unappreciated and underpaid. It's just incredible that we get to sit with people and, and be with them on their journeys and all the things that we're able to learn as a result of this. It's just, oh, sometimes I feel like I wanna pay my clients for what they <laughs> teach me.